I'd like to introduce uh, President Pillai, who will be introducing our uh, Nobel keynote address this evening. President. Distinguished guests, parents, volunteers, and children, I am President Pillai, and I serve as a board member of NSF. We are truly honored and inspired by your gracious presence here this evening as we have gathered together to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the North South Foundation. We are extremely fortunate to have Nobel laureate Professor Lars Peter Hansen join us as the keynote speaker of this evening. Professor Hansen was born in 1952 in Urbana, Illinois. When he was 16, his family moved to Utah, where he completed his high school. He holds a BS in Mathematics and Political Science from Utah State University and received his PhD in Economics from the University of Minnesota. He started his career at Carnegie Mellon University in 1978 as an assistant professor and joined the University of Chicago in 1981. Currently, he serves as David Rockefeller Distinguished Service Professor of Economics and Statistics at the University of Chicago. He is also Director of the Becker Friedman Institute for Research in Economics. He has been a visiting professor at MIT, Harvard, Stanford, Northwestern, and Keio University of Tokyo, Japan. He is a recipient of the 2013 Nobel Memorial Prize in, for Economics. His research plays a key role <laughs> His research plays a key role in our understanding of the connections between macroeconomy and financial market. He is an incredible role model showing us what hard work and perseverance can accomplish. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Nobel Laureate Professor Lars Peter Hansen. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I didn't know this picture was going to be uh, shown here, so this is a bit of a surprise. Uh, it brings back a rather funny memory. Um, this, of course, is when I was in Stockholm, and I was, uh, when you get the Nobel Prize, you have to, you're supposed to practice bowing to kings like this, and it turns out that the day of the ceremony, I was very, very sick, and I was in bed, and I missed my practice session, and there, there were some concerns whether I would bow correctly to the king or not. It turns out the Nobel Committee, uh, the, the Nobel Prize people have, have doctors on staff and they drug you and they, say, and, and they make sure. So, so they pulled me out of bed, gave me some medicine, escorted me to the event and uh, were very relieved when I actually successfully bowed to the king and to receive my prize. So it's, uh, it was quite an interesting experience. Um, you know, it's my great privilege today to be here. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed learning about the impressive North-South Foundation. Um, and, and I really, you know, truly admire its accomplishments, its ambitions, and its aims. Um, so today I was gonna, I'm going to talk about topics that are of interest to me, uh, and, uh, and hopefully I can convince them that should be of interest to you as well. Um, it's important in my line of research. Uh, I will resist my um, temptation to give a seminar, and, uh, or, uh, but, I'll, but I will talk a little bit about it. Um, I'm very fascinated by the analysis of uncertainty in the overall economy, but also in our lives. Okay. So, what is uncertainty? We saw one example of it today, actually, with, with this calculation with uh, like three two zeros or something. I, you know, if you were, if you were, found that peculiar, I guess I did too. Um, I started thinking about what, re, other ways we could do that calculation and perhaps get different numbers. Um, in fact, it's. I, but but I will not. Uh, impose that on you. We will not get, revisit that calculation. Um, I, w I, w I will say that no matter how I revisit it, that the accomplishments remain impressive. If you ask me the probabilities that I could have got the Nobel Prize, I would have assigned that zero. But anyway, um, 
So let's, why does an economist care about uncertainty? Or what is uncertainty? Let's start there. Good question. So what's the simplest form of uncertainty? Um, coin flips. I flip a coin, I'm pretty confident that there's like a 50% chance heads, 50% chance tails. Okay? Um, but there's much more complicated versions of this. And, the, and, and those complicated versions are, 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 should become all the more relevant in our daily lives. So let me make it a little bit more complicated. Suppose I have a, a, some vase or an urn. It's got a bunch of blue balls in it and yellow balls, and, and I don't know how many uh, are of each type. So in that set of circumstances, I don't know probabilities, and I have to try to figure them out. So there's different forms of uncertainty, and I'm going to talk about even more general versions as well, um, but without mathematics. So here's a picture that you might find peculiar. But if we look at the individual all the way on the left, you might ask, how old was that per um, How long ago does that person live? Oh, I guess. Sure. That person's name has, happens to be Jacob Bernoulli. Any guesses as to uh, when that picture is from? It's actually from about 300 years ago. And 300 years ago, he produced this remarkable result that is still taught in uh, college campuses today, and, and it's a very important result in statistics. It's, uh, um, it's called the law of large numbers, although he actually uh, did more than that. Um, and he, he was actually interested in this as a so-called social scientist, some, something I consider myself, um, and looking at data. And this is situations in which he had looking at data, and he had to look at data to try to figure stuff out, like probabilities. So if you think about this idea of like you don't know how many blue balls and red, or say yellow balls and you have to start like drawing and, and making guesses, he, he started figuring out how quickly you could learn from it. So how can you learn from data to figure stuff out? You know, it's not like coin flips where I, where I, where I just know the uncertainty. Okay. Well, how about on the other side of this picture, on, the, on your right? It's actually a painting. It's a painting by Pizarro. So what is that doing there? So, so the person on the left is Bernoulli, thinking like a statistician. The people on the right are people at a marketplace. What, when they come to a market, they, don't, they can bring their goods to the market, but they don't know what prices they're going to sell for. They, make, they have to make guesses. Certainty, or, or more generally, what, you know, what type of activities do I really want to invest in? Okay. So economists have to not only look at data, they have to also think about people inside their models looking at data. And, and making guesses and confronting of uncertainty. So kind of uncertainty really pervades economic analysis and, and, and uh, end our daily lives. So let, now let me put a somewhat... Hmm. Okay. I do, I'm not sure I'm doing wrong here, but the next slide's not coming up. Any guesses? I'm pointing the wrong thing. There we go. It's just pushing down to the other end. Okay. Okay, so what is this? Um, I'm a f in my own set of circumstances, I've benefited tremendously from knowledge and understanding coming from mathematics, from statistics, as well as from economics. Okay? So what is this? Well, it shows the three fields. It shows them kind of mixed together. And then there's this thing all the way in the middle that's called econometrics. And that's the fancy label they give to the field that I work in. Uh, but, it's, it's, but it kind of co combines from all these areas. And what I want to emphasize here is, is, is that for me and for lots of scholars and for people, um, it's, it's good to learn lots of things. Because you don't know down the road what's going to be really handy. When I was going to school, you know, all the way through, you know, high school, you know, junior high school, middle school, college, I didn't know what, what type of knowledge or skills or education was going to be most useful for me. But the fact that I was able to get a, a broader range of education turned out to be very valuable because down the road I could start you know, drawing on some of those various different insights. So this is kind of a funny picture. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit more funny in just a second um, and then try to talk about it. Now some people think that looks like me. Um, I have a hard time with that. It, perhaps it does. Uh, this actually appeared in a... It, uh, this, appeared as, a, I guess, a cartoon in a Czech newspaper uh, shortly after I won the prize. Um, I, uh, I, I'm, as I say, I, I, I don't find it terribly flattering, but other people really like it, I guess. 
Um, behind there uh, is, a, is, a, is a picture of a lot of my former graduate students. Uh, they, uh, they came back to Chicago, and they're all wearing T-shirts with this picture on it. So there exist many people with T-shirts of this. I've, I, I personally don't have one because I find it a little bit strange to look at. But anyway, that's, uh, uh, <coughs> so let's, let's go on. Um, now, I'm going to, oops. I skipped through a picture on purpose here. We're, we're going to come back to that, that last picture. So let's think about uncertainty, OK? I talk about risk, this idea of coin flips. Um, uh, imagine you've got an urn, and you know there's exactly the same number of red balls and yellow balls. That's like the coin flip. That we know probabilities, and, and then we can do a bunch, yeah, with mathematics, we can go out and do a bunch of calculations. Those are, th those are the calculations that came up with a bunch of zeros. How, what happens if you don't actually know the number of yellow balls or the number of red balls? Suppose there's a bunch of organizations out there helping people get ready for spelling bees and the like, and some are really good at it, and some are really not so good at it. You know, you know, once you, watch, you start making observations, you start figuring out kind of which ones are better, and, and, and you start learning about things. More generally, as we look at data, as, as we experience things through life, as we get more and more data observations, it helps us to resolve some of that uncertainty. Maybe not fully, but you know, the more and more data we get. So it's that middle, it's that middle type, type of urn that was what, what that Jacob Bernoulli Law of Large Numbers was all about. I just kind of keep on drawing balls, I, I, I stick them back in, I draw another one, and I just do it over and over and over again. And sooner or later, I start figuring stuff out. And, and, and you can figure out how quickly that happens. Now in economics, we often, we often face something even more complex. And that's this one. So what's going on here? Imagine you've got this, this dynamic economy. So, so in my field, what we do is, is, is you know, we need to look, build economic models that, are, that, that, that we can turn in, that, 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 that we can make mathematical equations for. But there's people that we have to model making decisions as well. So there's a, a, a fair amount of complexity in that construction. But on the right-hand side here, imagine you've got a situation in which there's an urn, you draw balls out of it to learn, and then the urn changes. It changes over time. It's like you've got this moving target out there. You keep on getting data, but then, it's a, but then it changes on you. And that's the type of complexity of the uncertainty that we're really type of facing. It's not the coin flip. It's not even, the, I, 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 it's, I mean, it's not even what Bernoulli did. It's one step more complicated because change, things change over time, and we're always trying to you know, chase down a moving target. Economists are debating now is, is, is you know, why is the macro economy so, so slow to respond? Or, or you know, you know, when's, you know, when's the economy going to get better? Um, uh, maybe today's economy is different than it was in the past. Uh, uh, maybe investment opportunities are different today than they were uh, you know, in the past. We're all the time, to, but, but, but data is still informative. So that's the real type of challenge we're facing. Except I'm going to make it one level, one level more interesting. Sorry, I'm going backwards here, but I want to go to this. So what's going on here? Um, there's a person all the way on the right. Imagine somebody come, and you know, I don't want to be teaching you how to play uh, make money, play cards, and, like, and, and gamble. I'm, I'm not trying to give you a lecture on gambling. But this person is playing a card game. In fact, this is going to be a warning about that type of activity. But, and that person comes into this card game thinking about, well, there's, a, you know, there's two other players here. Maybe I've got about a, you know, one in three chance of winning. You know, maybe you all have the same amount of skill. We're all, pr we're all pretty good at this you know, card game. Okay. But something funny is going on there. Look at the picture all the way on the left. I mean, look at the person all the way on the left. He's got something behind his back there. Um, apparently, some funny stuff's going on there. Look at the eyes of the person who's dealing. Well, look a little bit shady there. Perhaps even the person pouring the, uh, the, the, the wine is in, uh, um, is in all this. So what is this about? It's not that I think that you know, there's a bunch of cheats out there out to get you all uh, um, at all points of time, although it's not a bad idea to be a little bit cautious. Um, but even when you think you have things figured out, even when you think that you've got, well, a pretty good idea of what's going to happen in the future, Something's going to happen, and it's going to surprise you, and, you're not, and, 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 and so you have to, in some sense, be prepared for the unknown, stuff that you really don't have experience with that's going to come down the road, and, 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 that's, and that's also very important. 
So, so as economists, we have to kind of think about all these issues and uncertainty in these much more you know, general and broader terms. But I think this is also relevant for economic life. You know, we're, we're, we're facing an uncertain world out there and we can't assign simple probabilities to everything. It's not like coin flips, it's, much more complica it's, a, it's a much more complex situation than like that. But now let's come back to education. How can you, cut, how can you address this uncertainty? Well, if you get a broader range of education, Say, in my case, it happened to be economics, statistics, and mathematics kind of trying, you know, put together, but could just as easily be uh, uh, various different scientific disciplines. It can be um, uh, writing skills and the like. If you, have, if you develop talents in these multiple dimensions, that's going to prepare you to do stuff down the road. And you can, and you can figure out your interests later. You know, I, um, I, I, had, I took my first economics class when I was a junior in college. I had, like, no idea that, that, that this would, might be an area of interest to me. But if you build this broad set of skills, which you know, for children, your parents are encouraging you to do this, down the road it's going to pay off. And, 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 and just have, because it's going to give you the flexibility to do lots of different things. And as you get older, you'll figure out what you really have passion for. So there's lots of uncertainty out there, but there's also stuff you can do about it. You can, you, 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 you can prepare yourself for that uncertainty. You, you can prepare yourself for an uncertain world, and you can, instead of being fearful of it, you can embrace it. And with that, um, I want to thank you very much for your time. Actually, I wanted to touch you when you are here. Because in uh, good olden days, when the transportation was not very good, there is a very sacred place in northern India. It takes a lot of time and a struggle to go there. And even to come back from there also, it is a struggle. So most of the time, people never made it back. So if somebody makes it back, then they go and touch them so that they get the same kind of feeling as if they have traveled all the way there and got it. So I don't know, I have never seen anyone who received a Nobel Prize in person. Forget about touching, I have never seen anyone in person. So we are so blessed that we have you among us here and we really cherish whatever the, uh, the message that you have here provided to the students. Thank you so very much. I see all the kids up here getting Dr. Hansen's autograph. Dr. Hansen, will you please save one for me? Thank you. Such an honor. I told everybody at work that I'm going to actually be in the same room as a Nobel Prize winner this weekend. How many of you kids, just imagine when you go back to school on Monday and kids ask, what did you do all weekend? And you're going to tell them, right? You're going to tell them you met a Nobel Prize winner. How about that, huh? What an honor to have this weekend as a part of our lives. It's all thanks to the North-South Foundation. <laughs>